the world. He was in the world. He was made, everything that was made was made through him. He came to his own and his people did not receive him. But all that received him who were born, not of blood and flesh, but of God. When we think of the light of the world, we think of Jesus. Not only did he say that he was the light of the world, he said that we are. When we have Christ within us, we have light that shines within us. We chose John this year. It's a little bit different than we did last year. If you can imagine for just a moment, if you were in a church of Ephesus, in the, the city of Ephesus, and there's an old guy that sits in the back, and he's the last one. They've all died. He's the only one left. And everyone kind of talks about him on the side because he used to walk with Jesus. He used to talk with Jesus. Matter of fact, he was one of the inner three. His name was John. And I can just imagine if you were in that church, you would look back and you'd see this old guy. He wrote John when he was about 70 years old. You'd look back and you'd see, the, you'd see him sitting back there and you'd go, man, what did he look like? Don't you wonder that? What did he sound like? What was it like to be there when the miracles happened? I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to be in that place? John. John, you got to write a book. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Heavenly Father, as we come to celebrate this time, to remember this time, Lord, the darkest days of your son's life, Lord, we pray that you'll bring out a brand new meaning to us, Lord, that we'll recognize the pain, the agony, the betrayal. Lord, everything that you went through because you loved us that much. You didn't have to do it. You could have walked away. You could have left us to ourselves. But you didn't. You paid a price that no one else could ever pay. You laid down your life on a cross for us. And we praise you for that. And we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me?
So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. Jesus. 
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. can wash away our sin what can make us all again nothing but the blood nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make us pure as snow Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns. They put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold! The man, when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. Then the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he was, has made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again, and he said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin." From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. 
So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out, sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried, away, they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate said. The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the Place of a Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who it, whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which said, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his home.
After this, Jesus, knowing that not all, that all have, was now finished, said, To fulfill scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was a day of preparation and the bodies would not remain on the cross, so the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, <coughs> uh, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true. He knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place so that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. To see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary, tried by sinful men, torn and beaten men, nailed to a cross. the power of the cross Christ became sin for us took the blame for the wrath we stand forgiven Go in and shut off the lights for the upper. And this, Jesus knowing, I'm sorry. <laughs> After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the blood of Jesus the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and he took away the body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had called Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, 
in which no one had been laid. So because of the Jews, the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid him there. <laughs> 